Okay, this should be the final video in this series. We've already finished up uh, the application, but now we want to make some custom changes to it uh, to make it run on the more comfortably on the N900. It already runs on the N900 because it's the same as it would be on my desktop. We want to make it so that it automatically dials rather than just displaying the number. And there's one other thing we want to change in the script and one trick I want to show you on the N900. So first things first, let's have a look at what we have so far. I'm going to run our script. Here is what it looks like. But on the phone, depending on what view you have it in, but we're going to try to do it uh, vertically like this, you notice that these buttons down here take up a lot of wasted space. They don't need to be that big. In fact, I think it's more important to have the actual number pad larger. So let's go ahead and have those so they don't stretch out. So we're going to go into our uh, text editor. I'm going to use Vim. And we'll edit the Python script. And I will come down here. Now you might think that you, you're going to change the settings for the buttons, but actually those buttons are inside box two. So what we want to really do is change how box two is packaged into box one, which is right here on this line. We got, we're taking our box one, which is our um, vertical box, and we're going to pack in box two, which is our horizontal box down at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say, comma capital F for false. And once again, you know you typed it right if you typed it and it turns blue in Vim with the this color scheme. Otherwise, uh, if I forget to make it a capital F, it wouldn't change color and it reminds me. So once again, color coding comes in handy, highlighting. Um, anyway, so now that we've changed that, those buttons won't get stretched out. So we'll run our script again. Here it is. This is what it looks like, but on the phone, it will look like this. So our number pad is very large and our send buttons and stuff are smaller, which I think is when you're dialing a number, it's you're going to be dialing faster than you're going to be pressing these buttons. So it's more important to have them be larger. Um, okay, now we're going to add a function and this function is going to allow us to take the number that we've already grabbed from caller and actually dial it on the N900. Now I've already done a tutorial on dialing uh, numbers in Python on the N900. And it's the same exact thing. We just have to throw that in a function and grab the number that we've already grabbed, or pass it the number we've already grabbed. So we're going to use dbus. So we have to, comma, we're going to import um, dbus. And then we're going to create a new function. This function will be make call. So we'll do it right down here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Do, do. We're going to say define a new function that we're going to call make call. And we're going to pass it a variable that will be the number that we want to dial. So we'll call it number. Then we're going to create a new object. We'll call it bus. And that object is going to be a dbus.system bus. Then we are going to create another object, which will be our call object. Sorry, let's call that uh, CSD underscore call equals dbus dot interface with a capital I. Now we're going to have a few things on uh, this line. It's kind of a long line. dbus dot get underscore object com dot Nokia dot uh, CSD and this next part's going to be part of this line but to make it easier to read we're going to bring it down to the next line and we're going to indent it. It doesn't matter how much you indent it as long as it's the same for the next line as well which is also going to be part of this line. So we're going to say uh, com forward slash Nokia forward slash CSD forward slash call close our inner um, parentheses, comma, and then once again, indenting here, this because it's still considered the same line, um, and what we want to do is just make sure we indent it the same amount. Once again, it doesn't matter how much you indent it, just indent it so it is easy to read. And we're going to say Nokia dot, I'm sorry, com dot Nokia dot CSD dot capital C call close our quotations there and our parentheses and now 
starting a new command here. So we're going to indent it the same as our outer indentation here. Um, and we're going to say, we're going to use that object we just created. And we're going to say CSD underscore call, the object we just created. Create with capital C, capital W. And we're going to grab the phone number that we're passing it, but we're going to put it inside a string parentheses so that we make it a string because this is required to be a string. You don't want to pass an integer here. You'll get an error. So basically, we're taking the variable number, which we are passing to this function when we call it, and we're going to convert it to a string, comma, and then we're going to say dbus dot u capital u capital i n t 32 parentheses 0. Don't ask me to explain all that. <laughs> Just know that's what you have to type. So we've got our function. We need to call the function and pass it the phone number we're grabbing. Well, when we press send, it runs this function here. So what we went over in the last tutorial that grabs the information, splits it up and gets you just the phone number, and it posts that um, phone number in our entry box. Well, let's also call our new function that we just created called make underscore call, and we're going to pass it that same variable s, which is the phone number we're dialing. And that should be it. So I will save this, and once again, we can run it on the computer here. You can see it right here. And we can do, you know, whatever we would normally do, a press call number, and then the fake number, and then we would, uh, don't have to type a number for send, and we'll click send. And it would grab a number, but obviously we didn't type in a proper phone number, so we're getting an error message saying that the number we entered is not proper. And we get a bunch of errors in the terminal, and that's because it's trying to run uh, the stuff on the phone, but we're not actually on the phone yet. So what I'm going to do is, uh, what's the best way for me to do this? Do I just want to copy and paste the code over, or do I want to move the file? Let's try moving the file. Oh, I probably should put my phone on the local network so I can connect to it. Give me a second here, connecting to Wi-Fi. Should have done this before the tutorial started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to S copy our file to root at 192.168.1.5. And we're going to put that in our home folder for now. So home forward slash user forward slash. And, oh, I also have to turn on my SSH server. So I'm connected to the network, turn on SSH on my phone. Now, should be able to do that. Type in my super secret password. And it copied the file over. Great. So now, I should be able to go and run that script on my phone. So let's switch over to our camera view here. Turn the camera on. Okay, so recording on the camera here. And for now, you can always create a shortcut, but I'm just going to uh, type it into the terminal here. Let me see, I'm in my home folder. There it is, I see it. I'm gonna do dot forward slash in the name of script just as we do on our desktop. I know it's, you can't read it but it's the same as on the desktop and when I run it there we go that's what our application looks like. So at this point I can type in a fake number I'll just say 555555555 and I can click add call number and you can see the number disappears from the display up there just like it did before. And then I'm going to say 666-555-9988. And I'm going to say that's the number I want to show up in the caller ID. So I click Add Fake. And then I click Send. It grabbed a phone number, displayed it there. Oh, and then it starts dialing that number. Enter your PIN number. It's asking me to enter a PIN number because we haven't changed my phone number in the code. Otherwise, it would know... Um, what number is mine 
and we'll go over that in a second. But I want to quickly show you a little quick tip that I just learned recently on the Nokia 900. Here's our, our application here, and our number pad's this way, which works fine. You have plenty of room, but if you wanted to run it long ways, as if it was like regular phone dialing application, any application on the N900, once you're in it, if you hold down Shift Control, hit R and close the number pad. I'm not sure if I pressed that right. There we go. So you hit Shift Control R and then rotate the phone and it knows the orientation. You can do that in any application on the N900. I hear a lot of people complain that most programs are um, horizontal instead of vertical as far as screen orientation on the N900. Well, now you can't complain about that anymore because this fixes that problem. So now we can dial it with one hand just like a phone dialer. Or, if you want, you can go back this way and type it with two thumbs. Do, 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 do. Okay, so, so our application, application works. works. Once, Once again, again, I'll have that script in the um, description of this video. And uh, I just want to quickly remind you that inside our script, be sure to change this my number to your cell phone number. Otherwise, when you call, it's going to ask for uh, a PIN number. But if you put in your proper number there, it will dial and automatically just play the advertisements as we've gone over in previous tutorials and then allow you to continue making the call. So that's it. That's our script. It will be in the first link in the description. I hope that you enjoyed these tutorials. I hope you found them useful. I hope that you found the, the tip of rotating the screen on the N900. Once again, that works on, uh, should work on any application on the N900. Control, uh, shift control R and then rotate the screen just by turning the phone. Um, and that's it. I hope that you have a great day.